it's a beautiful sunny day today, so I am here with another wig video. <laughs> guys and non-binary pals, I'm Salman and this is my channel Jolly Salman. I'm a cosplayer from Poland and I make videos about cosplay and sustainable living. This week we're tackling the second part to my wig series. So last week I talked a little bit about the basics of wigs, where to buy them, how to wear them, how to know if they are good quality and how to brush them. But this week I am going to tackle the huge thing, heat on wigs. So heat on wigs is a very complicated topic because there are many ways in which you can use it. You can straighten your wig with heat, you can curl it, you can style it and you can also damage it. So this week I am going to talk about how to know if a wig is heat resistant, how to straighten a wig with a couple of methods, how to curl it also with a couple of methods and also maybe how to dye it. I hope this video helps you and let's get into it! So first up, we are going to check if your wig is heat resistant. Most cosplay related wigs are heat resistant and also the ones that are used for everyday use and maybe for opera and theatre are also going to be heat resistant. Most cosplay wigs are synthetic and most opera and theatre wigs are made of human hair which is heat resistant by default. Heat resistant wigs can be styled the same way human hair can but there are some little nuances you have to know. Okay, but I am getting ahead of myself. Let's check if the wig is heat resistant. What you want to do is try to take a little piece of hair that will not be visible. It is going to be from the back of the head or at the very end that you can cut off easily or cover easily if you fry the wig. I am going to insert some photos of fried wigs because it never happened to me but a fried wig looks melted and maybe changes color and it looks crusty and plasticky because wigs are made out of plastic so you take your flat iron and you check carefully if the piece you chose is heat resistant you do it on the lowest temperature setting and pray for the best. Now that we know if our wig is heat resistant, we are going to talk a little bit more about flat irons. Flat irons are just appliances that you use for your hair, but you can also use them for wigs. Flat irons sometimes have a set temperature and some modes, for example, but their temperature can also be adjusted in some models. My flat iron is this little handy pink guy that I got for Christmas a long time ago and now I use it for wigs because I've never used it for my own hair. And my flat iron doesn't have a temperature regulation. The temperature is low enough that it doesn't fry any of my wigs because it just doesn't heat up enough. But if you have a huge flat iron with many buttons and many modes, you want to check the producer's note on how high the wig can be heated. Mostly it's around 180 to 100 Celsius, but I might be wrong, so please check it on the producer's side. My friend has this really cool flat iron that has the ceramic part that makes it hot really wide, and I think it's a very handy thing, and if you are going to buy a flat iron, try finding one with a big ceramic plate here because it's just going to make your life easier. The first thing you need to know is that the wigs retain their shape when they are cooled in a position. When you're styling normal human hair, 
the most important thing to remember is that when the hair gets wet and then gets dry, it dries in a certain position. But on synthetic hair, it works like this. When the hair gets hot and it gets put into a certain position and it gets cold, it stays in the position. You know what I mean? You have to let the wig cool in order to keep it styling. Okay, let's go further into flat ironing the hair. You want to take a little bit of detangled hair in order to straighten it. You want to straighten it from the tips to the roots in small sections just like you were brushing the wig, just for safety and to see if everything looks good. But this is not the only way to flatten the hair. You don't have to have a flat iron. Here's how you can do it with just hot water. You boil a big bowl of hot water. It doesn't have to be boiling, it just has to be around 90 degrees or 80 degrees, like tea water to not damage the hair so much. And you dump it onto your wig on a headstand. Be careful because the headstand is from styrofoam, so it can't burn the styrofoam, but you can just straighten your wig with hot water. So now you let the wig cool in order to get the straightest look possible and the wig is straight. You have to detangle it a little bit again because it might get tangled by the water, but then you have a straight wig without a flat iron. There is also a third way you can use a steamer. Today I am testing out this method for the first time, so here we are with my new steamer that I bought secondhand and let's turn it on. I'm going to boil for it, so let's see. I'm going to wait with it in my hand. Wait. Oh, it's humming. It's, it's humming. It's like a very small petal. Okay, it's still not steaming. Are you steaming? Where's the steam? Is it? No, it's not hot. I'll wait until I see the steam. Oh, so it sounds like it's burning. So, where's the steam? Give me the steam! It's boiling. Oh, oh, here's the steam! Yes, oh my god, it's... It actually... It's actually... Spilling the water. Let's see... Spilling the water because I put a bit too much in here. <laughs> okay, so now I am trying to steam the wig in order to straighten it. The steamer makes the steam in like small batches. So like it's not as good as a 
straightener but it did straighten the wig so that's one of the methods you can use in order to straighten wigs so the steamer is a new thing for me because I bought a steamer second hand like last month and I haven't used it before this video so it's my first time use the steamer as it was said in the instructions and then you just steam the hair like you were ironing it and then it becomes like, you know, like a steamer works. You steam your clothing and it becomes wrinkle-free. And you steam your wigs and they become wrinkle-free. So these are the three ways in which you can flatten out your wigs. And also, straightening your wigs can help you a bit with detangling them. Because if you straighten the wig, it gets a little bit easier to like detangle the hair because it's straight and it doesn't like catch onto itself at least in my experience okay now you know how to flatten a wig so how do you curl it curling wigs isn't actually that hard there are many many methods of doing that most of them got popularized by drag queens and one of them is the steamer method. If you go to any drag tutorial you will see a guy with a steamer, a bag and rollers. He usually has metal rollers, metal rollers like these and they are great for working with high temperatures. You don't want any like velcro like rollers or plasticky ones because they are going to be hard to work with and are also going to get damaged over time when using excess heat and you are going to use a lot of heat because you are working with synthetic fibers so remember the rule the way you style it and let it cool the way it stays you roll the whole head onto your rollers or at least a section of the hair if you don't have enough rollers like me when the whole head is rolled up you cover it with a bag it is supposed to trap the steam inside the curls so you just cover it with a bag and then you steam it and it locks the hair in place and then you have to let it cool it can take a couple of hours, but the results will be worth it. Second way to curl your wig. You can just straight up use a curling rod. A curling iron is a very important tool, but you don't have to have it. You can be just like me, without a curling rod. I once thought about buying a cheap curling rod, but then I learned another way to make curls and I never came back. You don't have to buy expensive machines and tools to be a cosplayer, you can just do with what you have. So my favorite way to actually make curls is using boiling water or hot water. Just like with straightening, you boil a lot of water, then you dump the hair into it or the water onto the hair. It works the same as the steamer method, but it's a little bit messier and also a little bit hotter and wetter. So you will have to wait longer for the results of beautiful curls, but they are going to look like heaven. They are, they are so wonderful. You can help them set by, I don't know, just blowing some heat from your hair blower and mwah, the curls are immaculate, they are beautiful. Okay, now this wig is a wig I am making for Stevani from Steven Universe. And I started it in June, I think, and I have previously curled the hair with the hot water method. I boiled water and then I dumped 
the hair on the curlers into the pot or into a bowl rather but it's a very messy method for me so I gave up I think in uh, like the quarter of the wig so now we're gonna see if the steamer works better there's also another method that involves only hair dryer a little bit of hairspray and a little bit of water and it is rolling up your hair onto the rollers pinning them into the wig head turning on your hair blower and blowing onto the roller for a minute or two for as long as you like when they are hot you simply turn off the blower and you wait until they get cool it can also take a lot of time you can spray it a bit with hairspray before rolling them up or after and you can also do it with water and no water and you hope for the best this method has helped me make my Merida curls but it also has failed me multiple times so you have to work out your flow you have to check what works for you and also you can't give up you have to be very patient when curling wigs without a curling iron so just don't give up and they will turn out good so now let's get into dyeing the wigs There are many ways in which you can dye your wigs. One of them doesn't involve any heat, but it involves isopropyl alcohol and alcohol-based markers. This method has been the most popular one for cosplayers and for other crafters, for example doll makers, and it is quite easy but also kind of messy. You basically take a lot of isopropyl alcohol and you squeeze out the ink in your markers and you put them into the alcohol and the alcohol dilutes the ink and you have a whole container, a whole bottle of sprayable ink sprayable dye for your wig but be careful because you can't really get it off of your balcony or your garden or your clothes so this method is only good for you if you use a lot of safety equipment for example gloves goggles so some clothes that you don't really need and also if you do it in a place that can get messy but there are so many tutorials on dyeing wigs with this method I wasn't very successful with it, so I don't recommend it. But there is another way, and unfortunately I only have photos of it, so I will talk a little bit more about it without much b-roll. So wigs are made out of plastic, and what else is made out of plastic? Yes, synthetic fabrics. Synthetic fabric dyes are suitable to use on wigs that are heat resistant. So I used Rit Dymore for my Star Garden Miss Fortune wig. It was previously just three white wigs sewn and glued together and I dyed it. Yes, I was that crazy because I just couldn't find a good wig online. So I decided to make it from scratch and it turned out pretty okay. So. Yay me! It's actually here and I'm trying to brush through it and restyle it because it got really tangled in my last adventure. So keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best because I hope I can revive it to this state and be proud of it again. But anyway, Rip Dye More is a synthetic dye and it locks onto synthetic materials in high heat. What you need to have when dyeing with this method is a stainless steel big huge pot 
in which you aren't going to cook anything else afterwards. You can't do it because you're going to be eating dye. You don't want to do it. So just buy a second hand huge stainless steel pot and also buy yourself a kitchen thermometer because you want to check in on the temperature of your mixture. So according to the information on the bottles you have to boil the water and then add the dye and you can dye things. What you want to do with wigs, however, is only dye white colored wigs or very light colored wigs because then you are going to have a better result. So what you want to do is grab a little bit of the hair from a different white wig or the same white wig you can snip off a little bit of a weft and then you want to stir it into the mixture and have a little sample of the color for your wig. You can try multiple times, you can adjust the amount of the color you're going to use and then you put the whole wig in. It will get absolutely tangled in the water so maybe you, you want to stir it gently in a huge pot, that's why you got a huge pot because it has to be submerged totally and then you stir it until you have the color you desired and you have a dyed wig and then you put it on a towel that can be thrown away afterwards or used for other dyeing projects and yeah you dyed your first wig after it dries you have to detangle it and it's done i hope i explained the dyeing process in the most amount of detail because I did it once it came out wonderfully but I, I don't have any videos of that so you can use Reed dye more or I dye poly or other synthetic fabric dyes don't really buy dyes for natural fabrics because they aren't going to work on wigs this method can also work to dye like fur and other synthetic materials because it's a synthetic material dye. Okay, I explained how to straighten a wig, how to curl a wig and how to dye a wig. If you have any questions regarding heat on wigs methods then go ahead and leave them down below in the comments. Also if you have any advice or suggestions for beginner youtubers like me also leave them down there. And if you have any topics or questions for future videos, I am waiting for your comments because I always read through them and I always try to reply to them. And if you want to support my channel or my costumes, visit my coffee or Patreon for early access to these videos and other rewards. The links are in the description. And also, if you'd like to see my social media, they are always in the description and they are also going to be on my end card here. And that's it for today. I hope you're well. See you next time. Bye!